Welcome to the Christian Worship Hour with Pastor Harold E. Salem. The mission of the Christian Worship Hour is to share the good news of the gospel with a lost world and to encourage and equip Christians to pray for our families and our nations. Please join with us and the members of our church family as we study the incomparable Word of God. And stay tuned to learn more about how you can be a part of God's amazing plan to reach the world. We hope you will be blessed by today's program. I'm Pastor Salem. I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And uh, we're always happy when the weekends come by and you open your doors for us and we come into your house or your car or maybe some of you tractors. you got fancy tractors with radios. Boy, in the Depression years in the 30s, we sure didn't have anything like that. We had horses. But that's all a thing of the past. Well, today we're going to be thinking about Isaiah, a wonderful young a prophet and how he said yes to God. And have you said yes to God? Have I said yes to God? Or have we said no or said maybe wait or another day or something like that? So that's going to be our sermon. But before our sermon, we always have to have a letter, a couple, three letters if we got time. And we just thank you for writing. Got so many. And here's one written from a man who was on the USS Liberty in the World War II. He said, I love the ministry, I'm, and he's from Sheridan, Wyoming. I love the ministry. I'm one of the survivors of the attack on the USS Liberty on June 8, 1967. We were attacked with all the enemy's might, and still the Liberty would not go down. I was down below when the torpedo hit the ship in the starboard side, about 40 feet away, and still I'm here. I was in prayer I was in prayer after the captain said on the ship's intercom to prepare for tor torpedo attack. Seconds before the torpedo exploded, I heard a voice that simply said, Get down and get down now. I was standing, and yet I found myself with my nose flat on the deck when the explosion occurred. My men all died around me, and I remained alive. It was the power of God, and God, that God kept me alive. Maybe to tell the story, it was one miracle after another that kept the ship afloat, and it wasn't the crew that saved the ship, it was Christ and Christ alone. And so here he is, he's witnessing and since 1967 when that happened, he's telling about Jesus and the power of God to keep us and help us. And that's what we do. We're here to honor the Lord, to tell people about God. And that's what Isaiah was all about, to go to the people and preach to the people. And we'll get into that in just a few minutes. Here's Fargo, North Dakota. Thank you for the ser sermons. Love watching and le listening to your program every Sunday. My life has changed since I asked the Lord into my heart. Thank you all. And he's exactly right. I think this was a man. I can't just remember anymore. It doesn't matter. But uh, that's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so that means you're going to change and you're going to leave some of your friends. And you're going to live with, with people that love the Lord. And you're going to honor the Lord and think about the Lord, your new creation. Let's see, here's one I'd like to share with Tucson, Arizona. And this person writes, I'd like to say thank you for preaching all these years and thankful that me and my family can watch your program here in Tucson. Uh, we do that on Sunday mornings. You've helped me get through tough times when I was unemployed and your sermons and you have united my family. My father doesn't like preachers, and he thinks that they're all shysters and crooks when they're preaching. He'll listen to you, though, because of your sermons, because you're a great, honest pastor. I pray that God, Christian Worship Hour stays on shortwave radio and TV for years to come. Well, I chuckle a little bit. Now, I want to say, first of all, that all of the TV preachers on shysters, some are great men and women of God. The God's people are serving him. But there are shysters. And I'm going to tell you, oh, oh, I tremble when they meet God, when they've been a shyster in God's name, 
and have taken money from people and poor people and older people. Oh, there'll be a reckoning day. God have mercy on them. That's all I can say. And let me see. Here's one I just have to share. Casper, Wyoming. And they say, uh, I'm 90 years old. I had polio when I was 18 months old and was paralyzed from the waist down. My parents were wonderful Christians who prayed and fasted for my healing. It seemed my dear, listen to this. It seemed my dear Lord embraced me as a father would his child and showed me that his will, what was his will for me. I understood and I accepted it. It's okay. He promised to be with me always through all my needs and praise God he's never failed me. Here's this lady. She's a polio, paralyzed from polio all her life, 90 years old. And she prayed and they fasted. And then she says, just like God the Father took me in his arms. And he says, no, no, I'm, you have to, that's the way you're to be. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to heal you. And she says, that's okay, that's okay. Some people have got mad, see. But when you don't get a yes and you think you should get a yes, but you don't get it, you just say, yes, Lord, that's okay, that's okay. I want your will to be done. We'd love to hear from you, and I'm going to give you the uh, uh, address in just a few minutes at the end of the sermon. So get your pencil and paper ready. We'd love to hear from you. But let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah in chapter uh, Isaiah 6, in the opening verses, uh, the prophet Isaiah had a vision of God. And he writes that vision, and he says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, also, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. As a result of that vision, and Isaiah saw that vision, Uzziah was dead and the throne was empty, but God's throne wasn't empty. God, then he looked to God and he saw that, that God sitting there and his train filled the whole, uh, the whole temple. That God's throne will never be empty. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he was dead three days and three nights to pay for our sins, but he is alive and he will be alive forever and ever. So he sees God and God is on his throne and Isaiah cries out when he has it as a result of this vision. He cries out and he says, Woe is me, for I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And he's just amazed because he is so sinful. And I tell you, when you get a glimpse of God, when you get into that Bible and read that Bible, you're going to see that you're a sinful person and you need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus. And he'll wash away your sins and he'll clothe you with his righteousness. And that's the only thing that's going to answer when you come to the pearly gates because you're never going to get in on your own good works. Not by works of righteousness, but according to his mercy he saved us. All right, so Isaiah, he's a, he says he's, he's a terrible sinner. And so what this happens, he, he makes his confession of sin. He's a sinner, and he's unclean lips, dwells among people with unclean lips. And then we read in the fifth verse, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, sixth verse, then flew one of the sheriff, uh, seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the, with the tongs from off the altar. He laid it upon my mouth, and he said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And so Isaiah re realizes that, there are, that here he is, his wonderful Lord, and he's cleansed, and he's made clean. And so this wonderful Jesus says, and then so then Jesus talks about that. And God tells him, then he flew to the seraphim, and he touched him, and he says, Thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And then Isaiah, he had God talks. And God says, who will go for us? And then we have to have somebody to go to carry the message. And Isaiah says, I will go. Yes, Lord, send me. I realize, uh, Isaiah realized there are no draftees in God's army. There has to be volunteers. He's not going to take you by the nap of the neck and force you into doing anything. He's making it so that you're a free moral agent 
and you can live as you want and you can curse God and you can go on down to hell or you can pray to God and go on into heaven. It's all in your hands. And so he and so Jesus te- tells us in the New Testament, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And so it has to be a volunteer. And that was Isaiah's response. It was full devotion to God. It was total abandon to God. It was complete sacrifice. He would do anything that he wanted, anything that God wanted him to do. And so God says, Isaiah said, here, send me. And God looks upon him then as a volunteer. We're not robots that God or little things that God pulls us strings and we jump and we dance, but we choose. We are for free moral agents. And this wonderful God tells us, I want you to follow me. And it's just like God is talking Isaiah. He heard the, heard the voice of God. He heard the voice. He says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom will I send? Who will go for us? And he responds to that voice. And that call is going out to all of the world, to all Christian people that have no, know the Lord. And if you're not a Christian, you know you need to accept Christ and join this band. He says, he says, I want volunteers. I want people to go into the battle against Satan for me. Who will go? And and he says, and I and so Isaiah says in verse eight, Here I am. Send me. And God said, Isaiah says. Go, go. Now from this incident we see this. First of all, that God needs dedicated workers. He needs people that love him and serve him and will follow him. So many are dying without Christ. So many are lonely and weary and sad. So many young people need some help and some instruction and direction and guidance. How so many of God's people but God's people hears that call and God is saying, I need someone to go on to serve me. I could send angels, but I'm not going to send angels. I want to send the people that accept me as their savior like Isaiah. I want to send my own people. And so he calls them out. And perhaps we need a 20th century Isaiah to the Jeremiah or a Joshua today. And he called out boldly and loudly and clearly. And Joshua said, Who, how long halt ye between two opinions? He's telling the children of Israel, are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve the devil? And they're standing there wondering what to do. And he says, how are you going to stand uh, to make up that decision? And God is saying to you today, maybe he's saying to you, you've heard the message about accepting Jesus. You know you ought to accept Jesus. And you're thinking about it and you're wondering about it and you're pondering about it. How long are you going to stand there? To the Christian people, maybe he's saying to you, how long are you wondering whether you should give 10% to the Lord? And 10% is a minimum, and we need to give it to the Lord. Don't give it to us if you think I'm begging for money. We don't beg for money. We just tell you that you have a need, and we leave it with the Lord, and that's it. But you you need to give that money somewhere. Don't keep it in your pocket. You give it away. Give at least 10% to the Lord's work. You maybe need to witness to your neighbor. You maybe need to study your Bible more. You maybe need to spend more time in prayer and meditation. How long are you going to wait before you make your decision? How long are you going to think about it? How long are you going to be there? Oh, look at Isaiah. Immediately, immediately he accepted, he accepted that challenge. He said, here am I, Lord, send me. We have been called a servant to witness, and we have been commanded to do that. God tells us in Matthew, or Jesus tells us in Matthew 18, 28, verses 19 and 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, he says, I wish you would go. Or I would suggest that you go. It would be nice if you go. What did he say? Go. That's a command. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what God is calling us to do and God is preaching for us to come and do that. And so he is saying, he's just saying to you and he's saying to me, all of God's people, he's saying, who will go for us? Who will go for us? And then there he gives the command, go ye. 
And so Jesus did the same thing when he was here after the resurrection. Jesus says in John 20, verse 21, Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. My Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Just think of that, this marvelous mission that God has given us to represent Jesus Christ in this world, this world that is desperately suffering and they don't know which way to turn and we have the answer. The answer is Jesus. He's the answer. And, and, and somebody says, I had a sign said, Jesus is the answer. And some smart alley came up and says, what's the question? Well, I'm going to tell you this, my friend. I don't care what your question is. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer to every question. And I can tell you, and I'm in, now for in on my 76th year preaching, Jesus is the answer. And I can stand up in that pulpit here and I can say, I don't care what your sin is. And I don't care what you happened, how long you've sinned. And I don't care what you might have done. Jesus is the answer and he will take you and he will wash you clean of your sins. And like Peter, after he swore he didn't know Jesus, Jesus, after he could feel Jesus, then Peter came back to Jesus and he confessed his sins and he had repentance and Jesus forgave him and commissioned him to go out and to preach the gospel. So God wants us to walk with him, to talk with him, and to tell the whole world about this wonderful Jesus. In the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed, in John chapter 17, Jesus said, As thou hast sent me into the world, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. He's talking about the people, his disciples. He's talking about all of us who've accepted Jesus. God sent me, now he says, I'm sending you. It's a, uh, being sent by God. Look at that. And what does he say? Now look at this again. John 20, verse t t uh, t chapter 20, verse 21. Look at this. He says, peace be unto you. And then he said, so send I you. He says, some people say, if you get busy for the Lord, you'll find peace. But what does Jesus say? He gives us peace. And then he sends us. You see, if we're going out into the world to make a name for ourselves or see what we can do or how much we can accomplish in, in our name, then we don't, we don't have real peace. But God gives us peace and he says, now you have your peace and you go out and he sends us out. And what does he do? He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. If you follow me, you'll be fishers of men. But he says, in all of this time, you're going to be, have a joyfulness and you're going to have a peace in your heart because you're going to be walking with Jesus, serving for Jesus. And so look at what he does. He tells the message that he gives. This is what he tells, he says to go. And then uh, and Isaiah, he wonders what to do. He says in Isaiah here, and he said, go and tell this people. Now listen to this. Don't miss this. It's, uh, it's Isaiah uh, chapter 6, nine, verses 9 and 10. This is what God says. Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted and be healed, uh, God tells Isaiah, I want you to go to these people and preach, but they're not going to listen to you. You're going to ask them to come to God and repent, and they're not going to do it because they're hard and they're stiff-necked, and they're just as stubborn as an ox. But Isaiah, you preach, and don't you quit preaching. You, they, he, God says, they're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to be any respond, a response. And God is telling Isaiah, I want you to carry this message. No one is going to respond. Nobody's going to listen. But I want you to preach it anyway. Talk about what is this all about? And sometimes I wonder if they're, if they're listening to me. I know they're listening to me because I'm preaching the Bible and people are coming to Jesus. But these people were so stubborn and they were set in their ways, they wouldn't turn. Harry Ironside said this, 
He said, even though the word seemed to have no other effect than to harden them in their sins and rebellion, Isaiah was to proclaim the message faithfully. That, and here's how he tells us, Ironside says, the servant of God is responsible to the Lord himself. Having received his commission, he is to go forth in the name of the one who sends him, declaring the message submitted to him, given to him. He is to go out and to preach, and he's not to look back. And why is he doing that? There's not going to be any results. There's nobody going to return, no more, nobody going to come. And, and so then Isaiah said, what he think to himself, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to preach my head off and they aren't going to come and God knows they aren't going to come. So in the 11th and verses 11 and 12, Isaiah asked God, then said, I said, Lord, Isaiah said, Isaiah saying, Lord, how long? And God answered, until the cities be wasted with inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be great forsaking in the midst of the land. In other words, he says, you keep on preaching as long as there is life. The results make no difference to God. He wants you to preach, and you preach it and give it out. And this wonderful Lord tells us, you in Aberdeen, and you people in this area, and all you people around the world, you preach it and give it to them and give them wonderful words. And then, and don't stop until I tell you to stop. And why does he do, why does he do that? He does that because in that great judgment, he doesn't want any man to stand up and say, God didn't give me a chance. He's vind Isaiah is vindicating God. I am vindicating God right now because if you turn God away and you go on into a crisis eternity where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, when you stand before that great white throne, dear friends, listen to me. You're going to be there. If you don't have Jesus as your Savior, you're going to be there. And, you're going to, and God is going to say, you had your chance. You can't stand and say that nobody told you. I didn't preach very well, and you couldn't understand. You could understand my words because I'm just like a first grader in school with my vocabulary. You understood. You heard it, and you can't say to God, God, you can't cast me into hell because I didn't know. I didn't hear. And God will say, I am vindicated. Isaiah went and preached to you and you never listened, and you never turned, and you have to burn. Oh, my God, I, have, I am so frightened for you. And what you need to do is to listen to God, and what is God saying? God is saying that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone there only was one perfect person, and that's Jesus Christ. All have sinned. And the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death, not just physical death. It's that eternal death in the crisis eternity where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. All have sinned, and that's where we're going. But Jesus came, and he loved us while we were his enemies, and he loved us in all of our sin. And he went to the cross and he shed his blood. And he shed his blood to pay for our sins. And what does the God say? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. But when there is that shedding of blood, the blood of Jesus Christ in 1 John, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. And so we say, oh, I want that cleansing. How can I find that cleansing? And you just say, dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. And use your own words. Sorry for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and wash my sins away. And thank you, Jesus. I'll follow you the best I can. Amen. That's all you say. You say, that's all. There must be more to it than that. I was 10 years old and I prayed that. And I remembered as if it was last night. And Jesus is with my heart, and I'm going to heaven. And I want you to go to heaven, so pray it with me now, right now, as we close out. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come. I'm sorry for my sins. 
Please come into my heart and take my sins away. Pray it all over the world out in your own language. I ask you to come into my heart, take away my, my sins, and I'll follow you the best I can. You won't be perfect. Nobody's perfect, but I'll follow you, John. You can follow him the best you can, and I'll see you in heaven. But oh, if you say no, no, you're going to have to face God. And you're going to have to say, God says, I give you your chance. You turned it down. Don't turn it down. And if you do that, you write to us. Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. You write to us and we'll send you literature. And then also, you write to us and you help us with, with we had to pay our way like anybody else. We're not underwritten by any organization or denomination or corporation. We're just underwritten by the people of God. And so you just say, dear Jesus, should I give the Christian worship hour some of your money? And then he'll tell you yes or no. And if he says yes, you'll say how much and then you do it. And you send it to us at the Christian worship hour. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And while you're writing, you can ask for the new song. And we'll send you the new song. And it's a little Bible study, A Never Failing Friend. And you will just love it. But we need to hear from you. And I want you to know this. We're a member of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. So every penny is above board. Now we're going to close in prayer. And we always pray for the persecuted church. And we're thinking about the church in Libya. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the multitudes that are coming to you right this minute. I thank you, Lord, that you spoke to their hearts and they've obeyed, and we're going to see them in heaven. Jesus, we're praying for the people in Libya, our brothers and sisters. They're worshiping with us with shortwave right now. They know we're praying for them. And give them strength and give them courage. And oh, someday you're going to give them the martyr's crown. We won't have that, but they'll have it, and won't that be beautiful? Lord, bless those who are on beds of sickness. Bless those who are shut-ins. And bless the children and the young people. Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to write now. It's on your screen there. And I got to close with this word. God loves you. No matter what your sin might have been, God loves you. And the Christian worship hour loves you. And all of our people working on it loves you. And I love you. I gave my whole life, 98 years, I gave it to tell you that God loves you and I love you. And that's why I'm preaching. And I'm preaching, that you're praying that you'll know that God loves you and I love you. And I'm going to see you in heaven. But you have to have Jesus. And so God bless you, everyone, especially the little children. We think of them. God bless you all until next week. Amen. You've been watching the Christian Worship Hour, the weekly broadcast that brings good news to the lost and encouragement to the believer. We hope that today's program has been a blessing in your life. Support our ministry by contacting us at the Christian Worship Hour, P.O. Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402, or visit us online at christianworshiphour.com. Be sure to join next week for another life-changing message from Pastor Salem.